Dear brothers and sisters, you know, many of the scholars of Islam has documented and confirmed that one of the fundamentals and principles of Islam is our belief in the Sahaba, in the companions, radiallahu anhum ajma'in. And they made it a fundamental pillar in Islam that we have to believe that the Sahaba are reliable, trusted, good sources that brought this religion to us. Because anybody who disrespects or anybody who accuses the Sahaba of being unreliable, then he has accused Islam of being unreliable. He have accused Allah of being unreliable. Because Allah has appointed them as supporters and companions to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And today we're going to share what happened to these companions and give you a small reason why are they so great and why, why are they the best of people after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As we said previously that Quraysh and the people, the disbelievers in Mecca didn't like the call to Islam and the call to Tawheed. And so of course they started ridiculing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They started insulting him. They started throwing doubts and calling him a liar, calling him a magician, calling him a, a kahin, a soothsayer. And all these names and insults to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But of course our beloved Prophet ignored all this and really didn't move him in a negative way. On the contrary, he kept on going with his da'wah and he kept and people kept on accepting his da'wah. And um, I want to start by the story of Ibn Ummi Maktoum. He was a blind man who believed in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he followed him. There was a time when uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu was sitting with the chiefs of Quraysh. He was sitting with Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira and Utbah and Shayba ibn Rabi'a and other big names and figures in Quraysh. And he was presenting to, him, to them Islam. And as you know, if a, a, a big name, a figure, a person of influence gets into Islam, what happens? A lot of people get influenced by it, right? Like today, and I don't want to mention any names, <laughs> celebrities, when they join Islam, a lot of people also, wow, he joined this, I want to also join, you know? It's like subhanAllah marketing, yeah? And so the Prophet والسلام, was talking to them and proposing to them Islam. And Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum, blind man, he doesn't know what's going on around him. He came to the Prophet والسلام, وَكَانَ يَسْتَقْرِئُهُ الْقُرْآنِ He's trying to ask something about the Qur'an. And the Prophet والسلام, doesn't want to, you know, he wants to serve him and he, at the same time, he's talking to the, to the chiefs and the kuffar of, of Quraysh. And the Prophet didn't doubt Ibn Umm Maktoum. He knows him. And he knows that he's a Muslim, he's a Mu'min, he's one of the Sahaba. Now he wants to focus on these people. So when he was just, you know, talking to him left, left and right, left and right, he frowned. In Arabic, we say abasa. And once he did that, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed to our Prophet, correcting him. And the unzilat surat abasa, the first part of abasa. Abasa wa tawalla an ja'ahu al-a'ma. That the blind man came to him. وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّ And how do you know that he will become better and he will benefit from you. And the people who are actually, there's nothing in their heart. They don't, they're not going to benefit from your da'wah. They, they will not believe in you. Forget them. And this is subhanAllah something that we have to learn. Give da'wah to the people you hope khair from. Sometimes all of us are du'at to different levels. صح? You as a Muslim, mashallah this brother he has a beautiful beard. 
You having your beard walking on the street is a da'wah. صح? You wearing thawb, meaning that you are a Muslim, is a da'wah. You saying salamu alaykum is a da'wah. So we're all du'at in our different levels. Sometimes we get so caught up in this da'wah that the person we are trying to call to da'wah or to, to Islam, he doesn't want, you know he doesn't want it. He's arguing, he's debating. These kind of people, leave. don't waste your time with them. If you see sidq from someone or acceptance, give him da'wah. Give him, spend time with him. Just like Ibn Ummi Maktoum and the Kuffar of Quraysh. Allah Azza wa told him, don't waste your time with these people. Alayhi salatu was salam. Anyways, so as the Kuffar of Quraysh, things were escalating and one of the, the Sahaba were talking one day, they were discussing, they were saying, we want to show these Kuffar how beautiful and powerful the, 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 the recitation, the speech of Allah is. We want someone to publicly recite it in front of the Kaaba. So they were saying, who will do it? Who will do it? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, I will do it. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was يعني, a thin, frowny guy, not a big guy like Umar. Yeah, thin guy. And so he said, I will do it. So they said, no, you, let's, someone else will do it. He said, don't worry, I will do it. So he goes and he stands in front of the Kaaba and he recites Ar-Rahman, Allama Al-Quran. Surah Ar-Rahman. People are seeing, what is this? What is, what is he saying? So they come up, uh, they come up to him. Al-Aswad ibn al-Muttalib wal-Walid ibn al-Mughira wa Umayya ibn khalaf wa al-Aas ibn wa'il. Biggest kuffar in, in, in Quraysh and Mecca. What are you saying? Then they realize he's reciting the Quran. So they beat him until he falls on the floor. They started beating him. Then he went back to his friends, to the companions. He said, huh, what do you think? How did you find me? He said, mashallah, good. <laughs> they praised him. So he said, if you want, I'll go back again. I'll go recite again, I'll get beaten, no problem. I'll do it again. <laughs> Subhanallah, sometimes, you know, when Iman gets into your heart, or the Haqq gets into your heart, any external beating doesn't really matter. Allah, it doesn't even matter. And we've heard so many stories, subhanAllah, of people who accepted Islam, the whole world went against them. Wallahi, the whole world went against them. Like atheists and other religions and all that, they accepted Islam, their families fought them, they were kicked out of maybe their countries. I don't care. Most importantly, I know the truth. Most importantly, I believe in Allah, and inshaAllah, Allah will accept me in His, in His mercy. And this is powerful, huh? This is what power is. Nothing can hurt you, indestructible. That's why, that's why the enemies of Islam, they don't want to just, يعني, God forbid, but kill you, you Muslims. No, no, because that doesn't make any difference. Because mashallah, Muslims are always populating. You know? They don't want that. They want to change your religion. If they change your religion, khalas. Then we are nothing. This is, uh, you, you having a very, very powerful thing to stand up for. So we have to, you hold that religion with, with power. Anyways, after the ridiculing and the insults and all that stuff, things escalated. Now the kuffar of Quraysh thought that this is serious. This is not going to stop. What did they do? They referred or refuted to beating and torture. They increased their attack on the Muslimin. And they started torturing them, beating them, even killing them. Because just talking and convincing them or threatening them was, was not working anymore. Uh, Uthman ibn Affan, one of the, he accepted Islam through Abu Bakr, as we know. Uthman ibn Affan, his uncle would wrap him in palm leaves and he would set fire under him just because he was a Muslim. Imagine somebody 
putting fire under you and wrapping you in, in leaves. Heat is, is very painful. Have you tried getting burnt before? I have got burnt before my hand. It is the most painful thing you can ever imagine. It's powerful. And so, Uthman ibn Affan would get tortured. Not because of anything, not because he committed a crime, not he because he insulted someone, not he because he stole, it's just because he believes in Allah. He believes in Allah and he re rejects kufr. Now, when Umm Mus'ab ibn Umair, Mus'ab ibn Umair also converted to Islam. When she heard of her son accepting Islam, and they were a very high, rich family, wealthy family, she tortured him, and she did not give him any food, and she expelled him. She kicked him out of the house. And the guy has no money, because خلاص, they took away all his money and income. He had no food, he had no home. He was seen on the streets and he was young. And you know, people who are fed well and kept well in houses, their skin is nice, soft, right? You see people who are working outside, skin is, is tough because of the sun, because of maybe malnutrition, anything like that. Mus'ab ibn Umair, after this, after this torture, they saw him, he has wrinkles on his face, although he wasn't very old because of the torture, because of the, the poverty uh, and, and, uh, and the no food, hunger. Bilal ibn Rabah, the Mu'addin, we all know him, the Abyssinian. He was caught by Umayyah ibn Khalaf. Bilal was a slave. He caught him and he would beat him severely. Keeps on beating him because of his conversion. And sometimes he would tie a rope on his neck and let the, the degenerates of, of, the, of, the, of the city just pull him, you know, like an animal, like a dog, pulling him around the houses, taking him up on the hill and bringing him down, just torturing him, degrading him, insulting him. Why? Because he was a Muslim. And they would also Subject him to deprivation of food and drink. Make him starve. Don't eat. We're not going to give you any, any food. Then, of course, we all know the, the story that they made him lie on the floor on his back and put a big rock on his chest. That is painful. That is very painful. How can he breathe? And what did he say? Ahadun ahad. Tawheed. Ahadun ahad means Allah is one. Allah is one. <coughs> When Abu Bakr saw this, he went to Umayyah and he said, I will buy him. How much you'll sell him for? So they negotiated with the, with the price and he purchased him. Once he purchased him, he freed him. The father of Abu Bakr, and Abu Bakr was known during this time because Abu Bakr was a wealthy man. All the slaves who entered Islam, he would go and free them if he can. He goes, they're getting beaten, they're getting tortured. Abu Bakr would go and free them, uh, buy them and then free them. So the father of Abu Bakr told him, Oh son, why don't you purchase something, yani, something, a slave that is strong so he can help. Don't purchase these yani, frowny, small, weak slaves. Subhanallah. So Abu Bakr, what did he say? He said, I don't want this for anything of dunya or to, to benefit from them. I want this for the sake of Allah. And here Allah Azza wa Jal, on this occasion, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the ayah in Surah Al-Layl, the ayat in Surah Al-Layl, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى بِالْإِجْمَاعِ Many of the scholars did ijma' that this was revealed on Abu Bakr in that situation. Many of them were, like I said, companions uh, were getting tortured. And one family maybe had one of the worst tortures ever, which is the family of Al Yasir. Al Yasir were also freed slaves. They were freed slaves, so they didn't have any status in Mecca. Uh, Ammar ibn Yasir from Bani Makhzum, along with his mother and father, 
embraced Islam in its early phases, and they were repeatedly made to lie on the uh, burning sand and beaten severely. You've seen the heat in the UAE. Imagine you, I can't even walk on sand. Imagine somebody makes you lie on the sand in the heat. Not only that, and beat you. What kind of torture is this? Sallallahu alayhi afiyah. And while they were getting beaten, they would throw also coal, burning coal on them. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed by them once and he saw them getting tortured. And he said, Sabran ala Yasir, fa'inna mathwakum al Jannah. O family of Yasir, be patient. You will certainly find your place in paradise. Here, yani, let's stop and just reflect upon this. What did the Prophet والسلام, see? He saw his brothers and sisters, Al Yasir, getting tortured. صح? Is that evil or no? Evil. Is that bad or no? Yes. And we know in the hadith, the Prophet وسلم, If anybody sees a wrongdoing, you change it. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال انصر أخاك ظالما أو مظلوما uh, Support or defend your brother whether he is, an op he is oppressed or the oppressive. The Sahaba said how I can support him when he's oppressive? He said hold him from being oppressive. Yeah, Don't let him be oppressive. This is how you support your brother. So in this scenario Al Yasir were being oppressed. Did they need help? Yes, they needed help. But it wasn't the time. And this is, brothers and sisters, since that we are living in a world of doubts, and a time of doubts and ambiguity, and many things are playing with our emotions without any ilm, you must understand, not every munkar, not every wrongdoing, we can change it instantly. Do you agree with that or no? Look at the world around us. In that situation, Islam was weak or strong? Weak. And there was wrongdoing and transgression. But the Prophet ﷺ did not do anything. Because it wasn't the time. Because he wasn't able to do anything. So he said, Sabran ala yasir. Even if we cannot change that wrongdoing, Allah will give us Jannah, paradise. So a Muslim should be mindful of that. Don't become pragmatic. Don't become only attached to this dunya. Either I change it now or I have lost the battle. No, Muslims are not like that. Ali Yasir, they accepted Islam and they got killed. Not them, his, his mother, Sumayya. Was it Abu Jahl? Abu Jahl came with a spear and he stabbed her in her private parts. How filthy is that? And you know back then the Arabs, you don't do this to a girl. It is even against their, their tradition and customs that you do something like that to a, to a woman. And he stabbed her and he killed her. And she was the first woman martyr in Islam. And we see this, this is transgression. But like I said, sometimes it is not something that we that we, uh, that we can change. And Ammar was young. They'd catch him, beat him, and tell him, Ukfur bi Muhammad. He would say, no, no, no. They beat him, they beat him. Then he starts insulting. They tell him, insult Muhammad. He insults him. He says, Ukfur billah. Because he's getting beaten, tortured, he says, he does it. Out of pain. Yeah? He rushed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he told him, complaining, Ya Rasulullah, I said this and I said that and I insulted you and I did kufr with my, with my tongue. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, how do you find your heart? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I have, I have confirmed faith in my heart. I have iman. I'm just doing it because they're hurting me. I'm not doing it because I believe in what I'm saying. 
And subhanallah, and then Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the following ayah. Man kafara billah ba'da imanihi Man kafara billah min ba'da imanihi illa man ukriha wa qalbuhu mutma'innun bil iman. Who disbelieves in Allah except the one who has been hated or forced but his heart is يعني, uh, settled with belief, with iman. And this is a very important mas'ala, ikrah. Sometimes people maybe are forced to do haram or are forced to do even kufr in severe cases, forced. Then Allah does not burden you with that sin or something like that. One of the examples is maybe in some cases, some scenarios, maybe uh, haram is some kind of element of haram is everywhere. You cannot escape it. Insurance or riba or something like that. I cannot. He says, I cannot escape it as a Muslim. I cannot. I hate it with my heart, but it's there. It's in my life. Mukra. Allah will not burden you with that. Yeah? And also Khabbab, Khabbab ibn al Arat. One of also the slaves of Um Ammar al Khuzaiya. They would twist his hair and pull him and throw, her, throw him into the fire, burn him, burn his skin. And the fire would just be set by his skin. And it gets really crispy until the fire is gone. That's how much torture this was. He went to the Prophet. With a bunch of Sahaba. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, Ala Tastansiruna, who support us, you know, we, we want some support. Ala Tadu, Tadullah. And the Prophet was lying next to, a Kaab, next to the Kaaba under a shade. So he got up and he was upset. But at the same time, he is supporting them with something very beautiful. He said that the people before you who were following religion, they would grab them and put them into a hole. Their body half of it is in the hole and they sue them in half just so they can leave their religion and that doesn't work with them. They still own their religion. Imagine somebody sewing something in half, like a piece of wood, it's just splitting in half. Something you know and you can't even imagine. And he said they will not leave their religion, even, be, even when they are tortured like that. And then he said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's giving them some uh, uh, psychological support. Yeah? And giving them sabr. And then he said, Wallahi, that this matter, yani religion, will be completed by the will of Allah. And people will travel from, San, from Sana'a to Hadramaut. He will not fear anything except, except, uh, except Allah and fear the wolf on his sheep. And Allah will complete this religion. But you are being hasty. But you are being hasty. Yani the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's kind of telling us also, Jannah is not cheap. You will find some calamities. Maybe you will get killed. Maybe you'll be thrown in the, in the streets. Maybe people will insult you, beat you, whatever it is. Allah is all fair. Allah is unfair. Allah is all fair. Allah will put a test on you. Wait, be patient. Try to fix it. You cannot fix it. Be patient. Just as the Sahaba, how they were. And they were with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they wanted the Prophet to do dua, to lift this calamity from them. But SubhanAllah, Allah Azza wa Jal did not permit that. It wasn't revealed that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would do dua for them. Does that defy tawakkul? Absolutely not. At tawakkul, it is the full reliance on Allah with your heart, with taking the necessary means, with your actions. 
Some people think tawakkul is just you sit there and say, I am mutawakkil on Allah and not work and not do anything. And this is false. Hadha tawakkul. This is, means you're just relying on nothing. <laughs> you're just relying on, on just your heart. And this is not true. A tawakkul is you rely on Allah and you do your necessary means. So this was part of tawakkul. The, the Sahaba had tawakkul. Now, <sighs> Quraysh, after all these beatings and all that, you know, by the way, they couldn't attack the Prophet directly because of his uncle and because he had a high status, the Prophet ﷺ. And so they couldn't really attack him physically, attack him right now. And so they'd go to his uncle, Abu Talib. And they would say, oh Abu Talib, your nephew curses our gods, complaining and find faults in our, way, in our life and mocks our religion and degrades our forefathers. Either you stop him or you must let us get, get a hold of him and we will solve the problem. And they're threatening him. So Abu Talib would you know, diplomatically say, don't worry, I'll speak to him. He's not harming anyone. You know, just trying to convince them, buying them, just trying to cool them down. And Again, they would come back to Abu Talib and insist. And they would insist on him, stop him or he's going to get killed. So Abu Talib, and he, you know, he's getting pressured now. And he doesn't want to have problems with the big chiefs of Quraysh because he lo he'll lose his status also. So he went to, he went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, spare me and yourself and do not put bur a burden on me that I cannot bear. Yani don't put me in that situation. That I, I'm getting really, you know, I cannot help you anymore. I'm reaching that limit, khalas. Can you please stop? And this narration was not authentic. Al-Albani, -Al rahimahullah, said this narration is not authentic, but because this is the seerah and there is no hukum built on it, we can, of course, say it and use it and benefit from it. So, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O oh uncle, by Allah, Wallahi, if they put the sun on my right hand and the moon on my left hand on condition that I would abandon this religion, this course, this da'wah, I would not abandon it until Allah has made me victorious or I perish. Yani forget about it. I'm going to do it. Whatever happens, happens. I'm going to keep on going. And as if the Prophet wasn't happy with what he heard from Abu Talib. So he walked away. Abu Talib called him back. Oh nephew, come back. And he said, go and preach with what you please. For by Allah, I will never forsake you. Khalas, I will, I will support you. Don't worry. And this is the funny thing. Now Kufar Quraysh didn't like this. They came back to Abu Talib again. Because they know he is the barrier. If they remove him, they can get to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They came and they said, Oh Abu Talib, look at this. Qismatun Liza, Wallahi. They said, Oh Abu Talib, we have brought you a smart young boy, still in the bloom of his youth, fresh, still young, young boy, to make use of his mind and strength and take him as your son. They're giving him a son. Take, this is your new son. Take it for you, like a gift. Okay, what's the price? They said, in exchange for your nephew, who has run counter to your religion and brought your social conflict, found fault with your way of life. Okay, so what's the deal? Yani, give us Muhammad, we'll give you this little boy, replace. And we'll take him and we'll kill him. We'll kill Muhammad and you take this boy yani, as a replacement. So he said, Wallahi, this is an unfair bargain. Yeah, and you give me your child, I raise him, and I give you my child, you kill him? How is that fair? <laughs> so he rejected this yeah, any transgressive or unfair uh, offer. Taban Abu Lahab was number one in his evil and wickedness and fighting the Prophet wasallam, And he was his uncle. He was his uncle. Uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu Lahab, his two sons were married to the daughters of the Prophet. Ruqayya and Um Kulthum. 
once these things escalated and he saw that this is not going to work, he told his sons, divorce them because of Islam, because they were uh, the, the daughters of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was so happy and celebrating, celebra and he celebrated when the death of Abdullah ibn Nabi, Abdullah ibn Muhammad, when he died. And he died after the call of Islam, after the revelation, Abdullah was born and he died. And one of the, one of the kuffar would say, the man cut off with offspring. Butira Muhammad, and he's running on in the in the in the alleys and uh, in the in the city, or in the village, and he's saying Muhammad is, has no offsprings. He's making fun of him. So Allah Azza wa Jal anzala surat al kawthar Why? To support the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He lost a child, and people are making fun of him. Imagine, and yani you lose a child, and people are making fun of you that you lost that child. They they're laughing at you. So Allah Azza wa Jal revealed Surah Al-Kawthar and in it inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar that you are the one who is who's been gonna be cut off and nobody will remember you and you are the nobody. And of course when the revelation uh, came down to Muhammad about about Abu Jahl Abu Lahab Afwan Abu Lahab, Tabbat yada Abi Lahabim wa tab. Ma agna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab. Ta yasla naran data lahab. Wa mraatuhu hammalat al hatab. Fi jidiha hablum min masad. He heard it. He was there. He was alive. And he was hearing it. And Umm Jamil bint Harb. She was the, she was the wife of Abu, Abu Lahab. When she heard this, she was a very ill-mannered, hot-tempered woman. You know, like what we call today Karen, <laughs> like Karens, you know, <laughs> screaming and fighting and insulting and just attacking everyone. It's a crazy woman. So she picked up a rock and she's looking for the prophet. She wants to hit him. Where is this Muhammad? Where is he? And he was sitting uh, next to the Kaaba with Abu Bakr, his friend. When she came, she started talking to Abu Bakr. Where is Muhammad? I'm going to hit him. I'm going to show you. I'm going to break his head, whatever. I'm, I'm going to hurt him. And the Prophet was sitting there next to him. And she walked away. Abu Bakr is looking at the Prophet. She said, she didn't see you? He's like, no, she didn't see me. How? She said, Allah put a barrier in front of her and he protected me from her. And sometimes you have, that's how you have to deal with Karens. Just leave. <laughs> Walk away. <laughs> you don't have to deal with them. <laughs> Allah loves that. طيب. And of course, also then they started transgressing on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of them would throw the womb of a sheep while he's praying. They would put wombs of the sheep on his back. And uh, the, the wife of Abu Lahab would put spikes and you know things, dangerous things in front of his path just to get to hurt him and putting intestines and wombs on his, on his neck, people screaming at him, people pushing him. One of the people, uh, his name is Utayba ibn Abi Lahab, one of the sons of Abu Lahab. He came and he started getting physical with the Prophet Sallallahu and he tore his qamis. He tore it. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allahumma sallit alayhi kalba. Oh Allah, send a dog to him or a beast to him. And while he was outside of Mecca, he traveled for, for trade. By the way, all of the Kuffar Quraysh, when the Prophet used to do dua, even though they rejected Islam, they all used to get scared. If the Prophet did dua on them, they would shake. Oh, it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to come true. See, subhanAllah, this is, they believed in him, but they just rejected the truth. Juhud. They believed that he was the Prophet. But because of their tradition and all that, they like, no, I, I can't. You know, pride, tradition, all that stuff. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so this man was telling his people while he went to outside of Mecca, he's like, Muhammad did a dua on me. It's going to come true. I'm scared. He said, don't worry, don't worry. We'll protect you. So they put things around him to protect him while they were like settling down. And it was narrated, uh, fi, uh, it was narrated by Al-Hakim fil Mustadrak. And uh, the ulama said it's sahih. 
a lion came and just bit him and dragged him, him only, killed him. Dua and Nabi Mustajab, the prayer of the Prophet وسلم, is definitely accepted. Anyways, naqif ila we'll conclude here. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله استغفرك وأتوب إليك هذا ما عندي والله أعلم وصلي اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله in the next class uh, next week we will talk about the hijra the hijra where huh no there is uh, one hijra before huh no Abyssinia <laughs> they went to Abyssinia before they went to Al-Habasha we'll talk about that in شاء الله in next week إن شاء الله